So we're back from Jaws. We got both our cylinders here, all ported, polished, cleaned up. We got our head as well. Now we need to get on to here. Now I didn't change out these pistons. I know everybody's going to say you should have changed them, but we don't, we're kind of limited on our time. So I'm just going to install everything. Then probably at the end of the season, I'm going to tear this apart. We'll go through the whole motor, make sure everything is done on it. And I'll shoot a whole bunch of videos on that. But right now we're just going to put this together just like you were doing it at home. Everything is uh, all the original stuff. Now there's something you got to keep in mind. When you pull your heads off, your cylinders off, you got to look at your base gasket. Now on every base gasket, they're marked. This one here has six little holes. Now that's going to tell you the thickness of your gasket. And you can't change that. You got to keep that the same. And what those holes indicate, they indicate that this is 0.6 of a millimeter thick or 24 thou. If it had three holes, it would mean it's 0.3 of a millimeter or 12 thou. All right, so let's get this cleaned up and then we'll get our new gasket on. You want to make sure you don't get anything inside your crankcase. All these little parts and pieces come out. I'm just using a little bit of emery cloth here to go around, take out any high spots. I want to make sure that that gasket fits, sits on there nice and flush. This is just carb, carbon choke cleaner. It just seems to remove that old gasket, no problem. This is one thing you don't really want to mess with. I haven't done a whole lot of engine work. This is all fairly new to me. But you know what? I'm willing to try it because I just, there are some things I don't believe that you have to bring out and have to bring to everybody to get all your work done. Now you see a lot of guys doing this at home. There's no reason why we can't. Some basic principles exist, like, you know, if you have two mating surfaces, you gotta make sure they're clean before you put something back on or you're gonna have a leak. And anything else you need to know, you can just find on the internet. I got the shop manual for this online for five bucks to do this whole sled. It was a bit of a no-brainer for me. I wasn't going to guess at a whole bunch of this stuff when I can just open up a manual for five bucks and find the right answers. You know, so this has been sitting around the shop. I've had rags over top of it, but I still want to make sure that there's nothing floating around in here, some loose bits of uh, material. So I'm just going to put my goggles on, blow some air around, make sure this is all cleaned out. You know, I've checked over these pistons. If there was a crack or if part of the skirt was broken off, I would have replaced them. But I have a feeling it's going to get me through the season. Let's hope. Okay, now I'm going to install my base gasket. I'm not putting any kind of sealing product on here at all. It just goes on like this. It has a six holes like the original one did, and I'm using the writing out. So when I took these off, I used a little punch and I punched a one little round dot on this one and two little round dots on that. Now that tells me where these cylinders had to be returned to. This one has one, it's going to my outside, it's facing forward. Now here's a really important step. You need a synthetic assembly lube. And I'm using Royal Purple. Greg at Jaws recommends this. Got a bunch of it. So I'm gonna make sure that everything is lubed up really well before we slip this back together. I do not want a dry start of this motor because that would be catastrophic. I mean, I'm not going crazy, I'm not filling it up with it, but I am lubing every surface with it. Royal Purple's been around for ages. I've used all their snowmobile products, never had any issues. Now this is a product I'd trust. Cylinder's done. Now you can use different types of lubes for this, but this one's nice and thick and it just stays right there. It's not gonna drip down onto anything. You wanna make sure that that ring is lubed up. In the ring where the groove sits, there's a little pin that sticks out. That keeps the ring from rotating as the engine is running. Now you gotta make sure when you squeeze this ring together, see I'm doing it now, it's coming in contact with that pin. So that's, that ring isn't seating. You just gotta find where that pin is Squeeze it together, 
and make sure that it's flush. Now we're ready to install our cylinder. Okay, I've got my Max Tough assembly lubricant on here. I've just compressed the ring with my fingers. And I'm just going to slip the cylinder down over top of the piston ring. You don't have to force it on. It'll just come on real easy. Just seat it down into place there. So I've got my head bolts. I've cleaned out the threads on them. You have to make sure they're nice and clean because it might affect the torque values when you do it. Now when you're going to torque these down, you can use an assembly lube. Put a little bit on the threads. You don't want to put too much because you might create a little bit of pressure inside that hole when you're putting it together. But you do need some lubricant on there because when you spin it, if it's dry, you might be causing friction and the friction will throw your values off. And I've even heard people say to lube up the tops of the bolt heads as well. So there's no friction on there. Now I'm going to just drop these into place because I'm going to be putting that other cylinder on and I don't want to move this piston around or this jug around too much. So let's do this. Use our assembly lube here again. Lube up our threads. Now there's a real science to torquing bolts. This just isn't just a thing where you just crank them down and hope for the best. Sometimes it is, yeah I know, you know, oh it feels just about right. But when it comes to this stuff, you can't play those games, so. We just picked up this nice new shiny manifold from Jaws. It looks awesome. Now before you torque down these cylinder bolts, you gotta make sure that you install this exhaust manifold because it's going to keep them aligned. If you slightly misalign them, then you're not going to get a good seal once you put this exhaust manifold on. So, as per the manual, you better do what they say. These should have lock washers on them, but I have to take this back off after I set this in place because I need to weld the bungs in for the Digitron exhaust gas probes. So this is just to tighten this up. There we go, now our cylinders are aligned, now we can torque them down. So the manual says to torque these down to 29 newton meters, or about 21 foot pounds. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go around them all and I'm going to do it half first. So this is 15 newton meters on each one of the bolts. Now that I've done that, I'm going to bring it up to my 29 newton meters and I'll finish it off. That's on the recommendation of Greg at JAWS, by the way. And when Greg gives me a recommendation, I always take it. There we go. Now, we get to put the head on. Get impossible